Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It is Tuesday, March 13th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Hey, look at that. No apologies today. Didn't screw anything up yesterday. Some tense times happening down in Austin while South by Southwest is in party mode, but there have been three explosions at homes that have killed two people. Two explosions yesterday left one teenager dead and one on March 2nd left another man dead in Austin. The blasts are occurring after people are retrieving packages that were unexpected yet delivered to their homes. All of them are being investigated by the Homicide Department, and all three bombs were left at the homes of African Americans. I certainly hope this is an isolated incident. Very early Saturday morning, Anne Arundel County Police responded to a burglary in progress in Barnsley Court in Pasadena. The victim advised 911 that the suspect was trying to break in through the front screen door, and when the officers got there, they found the front window had been broken out, and then they heard screaming from inside the house. They made entry into the residence, which means they broke down the door. They located the suspect in the living room and placed him under arrest. He was drunk and confused. He went into the wrong residence, and Patrick Henry Fitzhenry was arrested and charged with burglary. Hey, it happens. After the New York Daily News broke a story on a drug ring at the U.S. Naval Academy, the Naval Academy finally came out with a statement, and spokesman Commander David McKinney, the public affairs officer for the Academy, said, quote, The Naval Academy has thus far begun the administrative disciplinary process against five midshipmen for illicit drug use to include cocaine, ketamine, ecstasy, and mushrooms, and four additional midshipmen for failing to report known drug use of others, which is a violation of the Midshipman Administrative Performance and Conduct Instruction. Administrative discipline can include demerits, loss of privileges, restriction, and separation from the Naval Academy. McKinney did also say that military justice options to include court-martial still remain available and will be decided upon after the full investigation has been concluded. Bill Davis at the Capitol had an interesting article in the paper about drug dealers that have been charged with manslaughter. And it seems that the gamble that the county has been making is not sitting well with grand juries, as three out of the last five have had charges dropped. Police have always said if you want to find out who the dealer is, look at the cell phone of an overdose victim and it's usually the last person that called. So as we try to battle the heroin epidemic, it seems that we're going to have to come up with something other than charging dealers with manslaughter. The Anne Arundel County NAACP is holding a press conference today to address the mistreatment of African-American students at Chesapeake High School in Pasadena. In a statement sent to us last night, the Reverend Stephen A. Tillett, the president of the Anne Arundel County branch of the NAACP, said parents, students, local clergy are holding a press conference to address and publicize the daily humiliations and abuse heaped upon the African-American students who attend Chesapeake High School. Students are subjected to being called, quote, by some of their fellow students on an almost daily basis. In fact, a teacher also called a student, quote, and after several weeks of delay and inadequate responses, he was allowed to retire on March 1st, 2018, with no sanction. This press conference will be held today at 10 a.m. at the Mount Zion United Methodist Church, located at 8178 Arctic Drive in Pasadena, which is located behind the YMCA. In much happier news, happy for Columbia anyway, Columbia was named the 12th happiest city in the United States according to a new Wallet Hub study, and they received a total score of 69.53, which is just 10 points behind the number one city, which was Fremont, California. And I've never been there, but I hear that's a great place to be, and it comes up at the top of the list an awful lot. Money Magazine also named Columbia the number one best place to live in 2016. Other area cities, Baltimore was on the list of the happiest places to be. It was not nearly as high as Columbia. They came in at number 159. Washington, D.C. ranked as number 73. And interestingly enough, Washington, D.C. was one of the top five cities with the lowest suicide rate, as well as the second best city for high income growth. 
Good news for Orioles fans with kids. Yesterday, the Orioles announced the Kids Cheer Free Initiative, which is a big gamble for them if they have a great season and they're trying to sell out. It will allow children ages 9 and under into games for free during the 2018 season, and every adult who purchases a regularly priced individual game ticket on the upper deck will be allowed to bring in two children into the ballpark for free. And there's also some upgrades for the kids, too. They're adding a jungle gym to the kids' corner adjacent to Gate C, and they're going to continue to allow fans from 4 to 14 to run the bases after every Sunday home game. So there's some good news there for Orioles fans. And baseball season's going to start real soon, and I just really can't wait for that. Hey, coming up this week on the Maryland Crabs podcast, and check that out at themarylandcrabs.com, we're going to be talking with Mayor Gavin Buckley. He is just about to celebrate his 100th day in office, and we want to get a rundown and find out how he's doing. That will release on Thursday, March 15th at noon, so make sure you're checking out the Maryland Crabs at that time. Also, check out the Maryland Crabs for our Annapolis Film Festival coverage. We've talked to several different directors on several movies. We've got a very cool audio trailer that's out there for butterfly kisses we're going to be speaking to some of the winners of the shorts challenge so tune into that because the annapolis film festival will be here before you know it and that's a great thing if you want to get tickets or passes to that annapolisfilmfestival.com and just speaking of podcast in general do me a favor and recommend this one to a friend or two today it would just be a nice thing to do and if you're on itunes or any of those places give us a rating we appreciate it Hang tight, we've got George Young with DMV Weather, and he's probably coming in here with his tail tucked between his legs because he thought there was going to be snow yesterday, but hey, it never materialized. But hey, that's the life of a weatherman. Hang tight, he'll be here right after this message. I'm Sean O'Neill, your local RBC Wealth Management Advisor. More than likely, the primary reason you save and invest is to achieve your life goals while ensuring your long-term financial well-being. But before you can determine your preparedness towards your goals, you need long-term answers to important questions about how much money you need, where it will come from, and how long it will last. RBC Wealth Plan, a new industry-leading tool, is now available to help answer these questions and develop your personal plan using a conversational approach. With RBC Wealth Plan, we can create a personal analysis based on these unique goals while offering you the ability to weigh certain decisions and determine what's best for you and your family. Call me, Sean O'Neill, today at 410-573-6723 for a complimentary consultation. RBC Wealth Management, a division of RBC Capital Markets, LLC. Member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and here is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Tuesday, March 13th. After yesterday's non-storm storm in which our forecast, which we made late on Friday night, turned out to be a big fat fail, our first real forecast miss of the winter season, We're headed for better and simpler days ahead with plenty of sunshine the rest of the week and temps in the 40s and ultimately even 50s. But first, be sure to watch out for some potential slick spots out there this morning as some rain and snow fell late in the evening Monday and temps got down to 32 or less across much of the area. Okay, back to today and beyond. It'll be fairly breezy to outright windy at times today and tomorrow, but then winds die down by Wednesday night or Thursday morning and conditions will be seasonably nice albeit cool at times, for all of Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. So definitely plan on getting out and about as much as you can over the next five-plus days and take advantage of the early stages of daylight saving time as it's now light out until 7.15 or so each night. Okay, that's it for us today. Download our free weather app by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. And, of course, you can follow us at DMVWeather.com or on Twitter or Facebook so you can always stay weather-informed. This is George Young of DMV Weather with your Eye on Annapolis forecast. Make it a great rest of the week out there, and remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Hi, this is Randy. And Claudia Boldiga. Please join us and our presenting sponsor, RXNT, on Saturday, April 28th, on AAMC's South Campus for Denim and Diamonds Bash. Proceeds will benefit mental health and addiction services in our community. Now more than ever, we need to focus on this critical need. The bash sold out last year, so don't delay and join us for this fabulous night under the stars. Can't make the party? You can still help by purchasing a raffle ticket. This year's raffle is a stunning four-piece amethyst jewelry collection donated by Cezanne Jewelers, valued at $5,000. Only 100 tickets will be sold for the raffle, so don't miss out. For event or raffle tickets, go to 
A-A-N-C, denimanddiamonds.org. Thanks for your support of Anne Arundel Medical Center's efforts to improve the availability of mental health and addiction services throughout our community. Remember, it's not just a party. It's a party with a purpose. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.